This is a fucking mess of a chapter, and it is a very poor reimagining of chapter 3-1 from the original version of Resident Evil 4, and I don't even know which is worse, this chapter or the previous chapter in this worst through. Hello everyone, welcome to my Resident Evil 4 remake, professional difficulty, no damage, no new game plus items, no charms, worst through. I have no idea if I'm going to be doing no merchant for the rest of this worst through, but to be honest guys, I nearly considered using the merchant for this chapter because of how badly handled this entire chapter is, and once again, the amount of poor designs I captured in this one chapter alone is of a greater length than the actual length of this video, which showcases the successful attempt at chapter 7. As such, I'm going to reserve the Chapter 7 poor designs for their own video in my poor designs of Resident Evil 4 Remake series, and I'm honestly considering retitling it because this game is so fucking bad, I think it deserves a brand new title specific for its poor designs. But I'm not gonna talk about that right now, let's just talk about this section. So, in the beginning, there is a Plagotype Mandibula. If you kill that Plagotype Mandibula, it will drop a boot knife every time. Uh, I didn't kill it, because I was thinking I might need that guaranteed drop for the Water Room area, but I unfortunately forgot that I even saved that Plagotype Mandibula in the previous part, and I didn't really bother going back to previous areas to search for loot, and you'll notice when I'm going through these areas that I'm not really trying to hit a lot of the vases and the barrels. And it's because uh, I thought this game had some kind of dynamic ammunition system where it spawns certain items in vases depending on your current state. Like, for instance, when you're low on health, it will spawn in more herbs. And I thought, oh, maybe if I'm low on pistol ammo or shotgun ammo, the vases and barrels are more likely to spawn in the respective ammunition types. But honestly, just based on my analysis, this only seems to apply to the vases directly in the water room area, not really with the vases outside of the water room area. So, I don't really know what to say, guys. I, I don't know how the ammunition system works with the vases and the barrels. Like, are they instanced the moment you restart the checkpoint and continue a new playthrough? Or is there a dynamic shift in the items depending on your current status? I, I really don't know. And I was really hoping this game would have something similar to Dead Space Remake, but it doesn't, it seems, aside from a select few sequences. But anyway, guys, you've got to take out the enemies exactly like how I'm doing it. So the woman, you got to get rid of her. Then you need to shoot that guy, get him to come down. He will always go for Ashley. And because he's in the running animation, and every single enemy that goes after Ashley always goes into the running animation instantly, uh, you can shoot him in the head, get a guaranteed stun, and then melee him just so you don't have to waste your knife. Uh, kill the next guy. Uh, when you're on that staircase and you're killing that next guy, uh, if you stand in a particular spot, he will not go for you, and you can get rid of him, and then the next guy, you just gotta let him grab Ashley and then use your knife. Uh, something you need to note, when you're aiming your weapon, Ashley will tend to stand behind you, but she can be very slow to get behind you a lot of the times, but I use that behavior to my advantage to get that one guy to grab Ashley so that I can kill him with the knife. I then turn around, shoot the barrel, get on the cannon, because that other guy will just try to go for Ashley, not for me. And then I just dispatch the enemies, dispatch the catapults, and it's very simple. And it's kind of interesting that you can expose the cannon immediately. You can tell the developers intended on that, so it's good to see. But it still doesn't change any of this poor quality displayed by this chapter. But now that we're inside of this building, this part is going to be really stupid because I'm not going to kill these enemies. These enemies will despawn when I get back into this area from the second floor. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to run backwards because this guy always spawns behind you. I need to get rid of him. Try to make sure you get rid of this guy in two shotgun blasts. One of the shots has to be to his head if you're going to kill him. And what's going to happen now is the guy that's helmeted, he's always going to go for Ashley. And I'm going to make sure I shoot him in the leg and do the knife execution because... When you do the knife execution on the ground, you will stun nearby enemies, and this is important to ensure that they don't immediately grab Ashley. But unfortunately, the scythe guys, they lag behind a lot, and they can cut you off when you're trying to get back up here. And because they cut you off a lot of the times, they can easily hit Ashley. And you see that, guys? I did not get shotgun ammo, even though I'm out of shotgun ammo. So, like, I don't know how the system works with the items on this game. Theoretically, if this game had a dynamic ammunition system, it should spawn more shotgun ammo because I have less of that ammunition type. But it doesn't seem to be the case, and most of the time I get treasure from these stupid vases. 
And the treasure on this game has just as much value as having the vases and the barrels have nothing in them in the first place. And honestly, guys, when I replay Professional Difficulty after this walkthrough, because I know I'll be coming back to this game a lot just to try to salvage something from it, I'm just going to be playing with the merchant all the time for this stupid difficulty. Because it's clear that they just didn't design this difficulty well enough, and therefore they didn't design the game well enough. If they're going to be advertising a challenge for no merchant, not even specifying difficulty, yet you have to resort to exploiting the game like crazy. And my poor designs of Resident Evil 4 Remake series further contributes to this idea a lot. But you lure the enemies to that back area, and then you try to get Ashley over to the boost spot. And then you just need to avoid the rest of the enemies while she's busy unlocking the door and you can get past them. And once you're both through this crack, they will not follow you. And now we have this, the fucking Garador, guys. This guy is so fucking broken. He comes across as if he's blind, but I've had so many moments where he has actually magically spotted me somehow, even though I'm standing still, I'm not hitting any chains, I'm not colliding with any geometry that elicits noise. He just knows where you are. And without bullshit he is, not to mention the fact that you can't just simply turn that crank unless you distract him. I have to resort to this method. I mean, you can use a flash grenade, but the thing is, I wanted to save the flash grenade for the later areas. So I'm instead going to do this method. So he always does that scripted animation of trying to run and do the instant kill attack because he assumes you're trying to get on the switch. So when he stops doing that, I'm going to shoot to lure him. He's going to do that combo, and at the end of the combo, his weak spot is exposed so I can shoot it. He's stunned. I then throw a grenade while he's stunned because what's going to happen is when he gets out of the animation, he's not going to go for me. He's going to go for the grenade. And during this hiatus, you have got to get on the crank immediately. And this is where the luck and bullshit begins right now. At any moment, he can choose to come after me, even though theoretically he shouldn't be able to know where I am because he's blind but he didn't choose to go for me, so I'm instead going to stun him to stop him from trying to attack me when I'm on the ladder, because every time you get close to the ladder, he's programmed to do the scripted animation of running towards you and just immediately attack you. It's so fucking bullshit, and my poor design series is going to confirm just how fucking broken this guy is. And I think this applies on all difficulties. I don't know if it's something specific to hardcore and professional difficulty, but this guy, not only is he incredibly fast and he can immediately transition into running attack animations without needing to run, but he has so much phantom range on his attacks. And like, the, the cutting of the air, like you can see the, the motion blur on his claws, it's actually extended from his claws. So he's actually hitting you without touching you with his claws. It has so much phantom range, it's so fucking bullshit. And also, when you stun him by shooting him in his back, he will flail around and his flail attack will damage you. So you've got to make sure you place him correctly when you decide to shoot him so that he will not hit you when you are going for the crank. And you've also got to make sure you throw your grenade in a good spot so that you have plenty of time to turn the crank without him attacking you. It's so fucking broken. This guy has to be the most broken enemy type in this entire game among the other broken enemy types. But sadly, that doesn't really say much. Not now that I think about it, because every single fucking enemy on this game is broken, because this is the most broken pile of shit Resident Evil game in all of existence. And also the worst remake ever made in gaming history and the worst game I have ever played in my entire life just due to how fucking broken it is and how fucking dumb and incompetent so far below the baseline of incompetency these developers are but now we have a breather right here to just pick up some ammunition and just do some minor puzzles honestly this game should have been nothing but this because the combat is so bad in this game and it's clear they just want to be like Resident Evil 1 remake and 2 remake yet they want to clash those mentalities against Resident Evil 4. They were far better off just not having any enemies in the first place, or just making the enemies so fucking dumb, and just not having any guns in the first place. Because the fucking combat on this game is the worst combat system ever introduced in the entire Resident Evil series, for sure. And I know people are going to say, oh, the older Resident Evil games were even worse, but they were just running simulators. They weren't really built for combat properly. You just ran past everything like you were in the fucking Olympics, and you just relied on your knife for everything. And this only slightly changed in the original version of Resident Evil 3, but it was still not where Resident Evil sealed its identity. Resident Evil 4 was where it actually began, and this game spits all over the legacy of Resident Evil 4 with its shit quality. And I wish I could be louder and the like, but I don't have the energy for it right now after the shit I had to go through doing this stupid chapter. But we're now in the dreaded water room area, and... 
the thing that makes this Wuthering area bad is primarily Ashley, because you can actually run past this initial spawn by hugging the left-hand side. Then you can drop down, you can rush the other enemies, grab the water wheel, maybe use a flash grenade to stun them, or just hold them back with a shotgun, because when you're on the wheels, uh, the enemies are very passive when trying to attack you, so you can use that to your advantage. But the problem is, you have so many cross wheel guys, and the chances for Ashley to be grabbed are so exceedingly high. It is really fucking stupid. But what I'm going to do instead, and I, I hope I can find a better method than this, is I'm going to lure the enemies back here, and I'm going to use exploits to my advantage. So I'm going to stand in their unplayable area, and I'm just going to wait until they run away. As soon as my HUD disappears, that's when I know I've entered the stealth profile. And when my HUD reappears, that's when I know I've entered combat with the enemies. And what I'm going to primarily do is dispatch the enemies that go after Ashley because they're easy kills so long as you have a knife. But unfortunately, I don't have a knife. Obviously, uh, if you're playing with the merchant, you can just run all the way back to the merchant and just mindlessly upgrade your durability and just repair your knife every fucking time. But you can also do that uh, because the enemies that go after Ashley don't have any hesitation with sprinting whatsoever and they never really seem to stop. You can easily shoot them in the leg, knock them over, and go in for knife kills. And as long as you're doing the ground execution animation, you can stun enemies and at least get a chance to get away before they have a chance to attack you. And when you exit the playable area, they will just go back into a passive state and not attack you. And it drags the sequence out because of how badly designed this entire sequence is. And my poor designs of Resident Evil 4 Remake series is going to demonstrate just how fundamentally flawed this entire sequence is. They throw way too many fucking enemies in this sequence. Then you have the crossbow guys, and it's clear they want you to use your pistol on the crossbow guys, and also dispatch other enemies at a distance, but the problem is, if you're doing no merchant, you, you need to have an absurd amount of pistol ammo if you're going to save Ashley during that double switch sequence. And what's even more retarded is even though the developers advertise this game for no merchant and they know the player is in desperate need of ammunition because for some reason Leon is too incompetent to teach Ashley to fire a gun. And why the fuck would a trained agent like Leon send Ashley all by herself with no possible way for him to get to Ashley, even though theoretically he could easily climb up that ledge where he boosts Ashley up to do the, to do the switch sequence. Because we've seen him demonstrate impressive feats of parkour before, yet for some reason he doesn't display whatsoever in this game. What the fuck is Leon thinking? Sending Ashley by herself so that she can just be grabbed by enemies all the time, and then you have to contend with the fucking awful designs involved when the enemies are grabbing Ashley, because the enemies, they require a random amount of shots from your pistol or from your shotgun or from explosions to actually drop Ashley. I have confirmed footage of this happening where I've shot an enemy at point blank range with the shotgun and they have not let go of Ashley. I've also used two explosives in separate videos to try to get the enemies to drop Ashley and they will not drop Ashley. Why the fuck? Are the flinch animations involved with the enemies when they're grabbing Ashley completely drunk? The fucking AI system governing when the enemies get flinched is so fucking drunk and so high on drugs. It's so fucking retarded on so many levels. I cannot believe that developers think it is a good idea to put in that kind of random stun system for the enemies when they are grabbing onto Ashley. And they, when they choose to get stunned, it's entirely up to them. And that's one of the other reasons why the double switch sequence in Ashley's part of this water room area is so fucking retarded. You never had to put up with this in the original version of Resident Evil 4. The only thing you had to put up with was the sway on your pistol. And the sway in Resident Evil 4 OG on your pistol is fucking ridiculous. It doesn't make any fucking sense that Leon, a trained agent, could have that much sway on his pistol. It makes no sense at all, but at least when you shot the enemy, they dropped Ashley because it makes fucking sense. It's fucking believable, and it actually complements good gameplay. But no, you have the random stuns on the enemies com complementing bad gameplay designs and poor designs and just making this game even worse than it needs to be. It's really fucking retarded. But now that I've dispatched the ground enemies, I need to focus on the crossbow guys. And strangely, uh, the crossbow guys don't take that many shots from your pistol to go down, so long as you're aiming for the head. Uh, there is a straggler right there, but I'm at least going to be able to take him out. 
Uh, I really need to stay up on a lot more pistol ammo, and I, I really need to focus solely on the crossbow guys, but the problem is uh, the sway on Leon's pistol, not to mention the way the aiming feels. Like, there's something sluggish about the aiming on this game. And then when it's complementing the sway on your pistol, not to mention that every time you fire your pistol, the recoil is absurd. You miss shots a lot with your pistol at a distance. And you'll want to mainly use the original pistol that Leon has at the start of the game because it has better accuracy than the Red 9. But even then, the sway and the way the shooting works on this game, you're going to be losing uh, a lot of ammunition due to dumb reasons. And honestly, guys, I can tolerate the sway in Resident Evil 4 OG than the way the aiming works in this game. There's something funky about the way the aiming works with the guns on this game. And then when it's complementing poor flinch animations, when it's complementing other bad designs with the enemies, it's just a recipe for disaster. They, they, they really wanted this game to be a fucking joke, didn't they? They wanted to wear those poor designs like medals to supposedly create a challenging experience. Emphasis on the word challenging! When you're having to resort to broken designs to create this false sense of challenge, that's not a fucking challenge. And instead, you're making me resort to exploits like this. You're forcing me to treat this game like it is a game rather than an actual experience. There, there, there's so much more I need to discuss when you see my poor designs video series for Resident Evil 4 Remake. But right now, I just need to dispatch the crossbow guys, and you have to make sure you run back into the room immediately because these guys are very quick to shoot you when you're in the middle of the animation. And you'll always want to take out the crossbow guys in the same order that I'm doing and try to make sure that you are using the third person cover trick to your advantage to make sure that you're shooting the enemies but they're not shooting you. Or try to be very quick on your reflexes and just let go of your aim. Ashley is a big problem as well because she gets in the way of the camera every time because she has so much trouble crouching behind you when you're trying to aim. It's really fucking stupid. I'd never had this issue in Resident Evil 4. Every time I was firing my gun in Resident Evil 4, Ashley never got in the way of me shooting. But because of the fact that Ashley just lags behind so much, because of the fact that she's very sluggish, because of the fact that she has to go through so many of these complex animations before she actually does the action you want, she gets in the way of the camera all the time when you're firing your gun. But I've dispatched the archers right now, so I need to take the time to loot the vases. And by the way, do not expose the items in the vases unless you're low on ammo or you've killed the first couple of enemies. Because like I said, the dynamic ammunition system seems to apply greatly to this particular room rather than to the previous parts of Chapter 7. And even then, you'll still want to save up on some barrels and some vases in the previous parts or uh, go back to optional areas to make sure that you have enough ammo for the sequence in case you need it. And also, you might have noticed that when I was going through the previous chapters, I was making sure not to craft as much. That's because of how much the game forces crafting upon you in a lot of these sequences, because of how badly designed and badly paced and badly placed the enemy encounters are. It's just fucking awful. Like, the, the game doesn't understand how to properly stack you up on ammunition prior to certain sequences. And they understood this so much better in Resident Evil 4, but the amount of inexperience and immaturity displayed by the developers with the way they've handled this game, it's so fucking stupid, and it's really fucking retarded. And I don't know how Ashley survived that grenade just then, but she can die to grenades. But it seems to mainly apply if an enemy is grabbing her, I, I don't know. But you've also got to be careful that you don't shoot Ashley accidentally, because she will die from your bullets. I don't even know why they have to make that a thing, like just make her be incapacitated. Why does that outright kill her if you accidentally shoot her? Like, she's already a bad AI. She's already going to be flimsy in her movement and just be squirrely in her movement and just go all over the place and not even obey her actions properly. Why the fuck do you make it where the player can kill her? It's so stupid. And then when you have the enemies grabbing onto Ashley, do you know the amount of times I've tried to shoot enemies in body parts where they might get stunned? and I've accidentally hit Ashley because of the fact that they've made this very artificial design with the way the flinch animations work whenever enemies are grabbing onto Ashley. Like, why the fuck do you put the player through that? Why the fuck would you make this game even more awkward than it needs to be to the point where you're forcing me to try to shoot enemies and body parts very close to Ashley when she's on their shoulders and I've killed her plenty of times by doing that. It's really fucking retarded. And also, this is how much of a beating these Plaga-type mandibulas take. And there is actually a method to get consistent stuns, or just get a consistent reaction, not consistent stuns. 
on a Plague type Mandibula. If you stand close to them and you crouch under their close range attack, if you hit them in their uh, fleshy part of their mouth during their recovery frames of the close range attack, you will get some kind of reaction, whether it be a partial flinch, a flinch animation that puts them into a melee attack, or you might cause him to spit, and if he spits, you've got to make sure you're uh, spamming your pistol shot like crazy to stop him from spitting, or just get out of the way. And the spit is so fucking broken, guys. He can actually hit you without having to face in your direction, because the projectile that he fires can go independent of the direction he's facing. It's really fucking retarded. And I have footage of this happening that I am going to share in my poor designs of Resident Evil 4 Remake series. But now that all the enemies have been dispatched, I'm going to use the Halo Wheel. And guess what, guys? More arbitrary enemy spawns are going to happen when I put this Halo Wheel in. I don't know why the sequence has arbitrary spawns. This is not back in the old Call of Duty games, where there were, like, infinite spawns, or enemies spawn by triggering invisible checkpoints, or all these, like, invisible thresholds that you had to go to in the middle of a room to just trigger these arbitrary spawns where enemies pop out of the blue. But this game is filled with them. So many moments where the enemies just pop into frame or they just spawn out of the blue. And you've already seen this in my poor designs of Resident Evil 4 Remake series in Chapter 2, where I was demonstrating that the game doesn't want you to stealth Chapter 2, because every time you reach certain thresholds of that big combat encounter at the start of Chapter 2, enemies just pop into frame. I have footage of this happening. It's so retarded. What were they thinking with that? And that right there, that enemy was grabbing Ashley. You see what I mean when I said I had to kill the enemies? Because Ashley is the biggest roadblock for this sequence. It is completely random if an enemy chooses to grab onto Ashley or not. And that random nature is something you, I have to avoid when I'm doing this worst through. Because this is meant to be a walkthrough of a really bad game. And I have to ensure as much consistency as possible. And when it's inconsistent with when the enemies choose to grab Ashley or not, I have to kill the enemies. I have no fucking choice in the matter. And also, I have to run the gambit with the crossbow guys, so if I'm choosing not to kill them. But I have to kill them because the amount of times they hit me every time I'm trying to run away, or the amount of times they hit Ashley, which then allows other enemies to grab her. And Ashley can get up on her own in this chapter for some reason. Like, in that first combat encounter, when you first enter the castle and you meet Ramon for the first time and you're dealing with those enemies, if she gets incapacitated, she gets back up on her own. And the same also applies to this water room area. So it seems like there are certain sequences in this game where Ashley can choose to get up on her own accord, but I don't know why it's inconsistent like that. But regardless, even with that capability of being able to get up on her own, other enemies can easily grab her if she gets incapacitated by the crossbow guys. And so I have to put myself in the line of fire to keep Ashley alive and to keep her from being taken away from the enemies. And that unfortunately causes me to get hit all the time. It's so retarded. Oh, and that right there, that's another thing you can do as well. Uh, when you go into the unplayable area and the enemies start running away, you can shoot them in the leg and finish them off when they're on the ground. But bear in mind, guys, I've already demonstrated in the Chapter 2 video for this walkthrough slash worst through that when you're doing ground execution animations, for some reason, they can drain off more durability than usual. And my theory is this. I think it's related to the frame rate, and there's something wrong with the actual ground execution animation that causes frame rate to be a big issue, which causes more durability to be drained. And the reason why I cite frame rate is because in Resident Evil 2 Remake, whenever you were doing knife slashes, because the knife could be registered multiple times in one single slash, and this could be augmented through the use of frame rate by turning up your frame rate, I'm thinking it's a very similar case right here. It's almost like durability in these Resident Evil engine games are all tied to frame rate in some way. So maybe if I'm playing with 30 FPS, I don't get this issue where I drain more durability if I'm doing the ground knife execution animation. I really don't know, but I have to test this later on after I do this worst through, or I could probably get Ether to do it because Ether has been hard at work trying to understand this game to prepare for future Resident Evil 4 Remake content on this channel. And I gotta give a massive shout out to Ether. Uh, Juice, Italic Maze, PSN Failout 000, and other subscribers who have commented on these videos. They have been a big help in actually uh, consolidating all of the information I need to include in my review when discussing how bad this game is. And I already mentioned that I need to do a review 
Not because I want to do a review. I need to do a review of this game because of how much this game is a fucking disgrace to the original Resident Evil 4 and to Resident Evil as a whole. And having all of my subscribers just support me through everything I am going through, just bringing out all these videos, and also with pointing out a lot of the poor designs present with this game, and also with the way they phrase certain comments. It's all been very helpful in contributing to my review of this game. So thank you all very much for the support, and let us take every chance we can get to shit all over this game, and just call out the fucking retards and fake Resident Evil players that are supporting a broken, shoddy product. And anyone who supports a broken, shoddy product and don't understand what a functional product is are not right in the head. This game is the most broken game I have ever played in all of existence. It is a massive insult to Resident Evil 4. It is a massive insult to the Resident Evil series as a whole. It doesn't even understand its own story properly. The story of this game is more absurd than what it already was back in the original version of Resident Evil 4. And now just looking back at the original version of Resident Evil 4, I can totally understand the progression of the Plaga from Resident Evil 4 to 5 to Damnation. Hell, they didn't even include any of this nonsense. Look at all the black liquid around. What the fuck does the black liquid have to do with the Plaga? And they always forget about the black liquid in the later chapters of this remake. The only thing I associate with black liquid is the freaking Mutamycid. But with the way certain bosses are portrayed, like Salazar, Salazar's mutation is just triggered by Leon shooting him a couple of times, and he resembles something that just feels like it was derived from the fucking Mega Mycete. What the fuck is a Mega Mycete mutation doing in a Las Plagas game? What the fuck is this bullshit right now? And not only with the story, but the fucking characters. Leon on this game is the worst version of his character by far. Just like with Chris Redfield from Resident Evil Village. Chris Redfield from Resident Evil Village is the worst interpretation of Chris Redfield. And subsequently, they just followed this trend up with Leon in this game. Because the way Leon acts, and then they think that having him tell jokes all the time somehow salvages his personality, but it just comes across as fucking annoying. At least when they were placing the jokes in Resident Evil 4 OG. They at least had a bit more sense with their placement, but here, the guy tells jokes all the time, and it doesn't even fit the way his character is supposed to feel at these moments. And they also come across as very annoying, and they're even, like, stupid jokes. They're not something very interesting, like, No thanks, bro! That was one of my favorite lines from Resident Evil 4, but Leon feels so soft-spoken in this game. His actor just doesn't capture the very essence of Leon. Not to mention, Leon is so slow to catch on to what's happening. And Krauser from the original version of Resident Evil 4 said that Leon was very quick to catch on, as expected. But Leon on this game is so fucking clueless about what's happening, he's not voicing the proper questions about whether B.O.W.s are present or not, or like, what exactly he's dealing with at the moment. And he was so slow to even realize that Krauser was around, or that Krauser actually kidnapped Ashley, or with everything else like that. And then with the way he interacts with Ada, I mean, like, he lets Ada go in so many situations rather than actually question Ada after six years. And just the payoff that we get to this supposed six-year hiatus between Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident Evil 4 Remake is not there. And if you want to hear more about this, check out my blind playthrough where you actually hear the genuine reactions I had to the way Leon was portrayed. And I have the right to say that, because I've at least played more Resident Evil games than the average player, and I have at least taken the time to delve deep into the lore, into the characters, and everything like that. I know when Leon is acting out of character, and throughout this entire game, he acts so far out of character. But this tangent has to be reserved for a later video, because right now we're doing this really shitty sequence. If you want to know what the sequence was like in my blind playthrough, I was running out of ammo all the fucking time, because the game doesn't establish that you need to have enough pistol ammo in order to do the stupid sequence. The amount of forward knowledge you need when doing these sequences is absolutely absurd. And they don't give back enough pistol ammo, they throw way too many enemies, starting from the El Gigante boss fight, to the Bella sisters, to the Star of Chapter 7, to the Water Room area. Like, they, they throw so many sequences that just drain your ammunition. And then out of the blue, they introduce these kind of sequences, and I expected I'd be getting a lot of ammunition before the sequence, but I didn't. The amount of forward knowledge you need is insane, and the way the flow and pacing of the encounters is, 
they throw so many ammunition draining sequences and then out of the blue they introduce a sequence that requires ammunition and look at the amount of ammo that I have right now. Not to mention, you have so many fucking enemies trying to get Ashley. Like, why did he put this many enemies that are trying to get Ashley? And I appreciate that they do die fast, but it doesn't mean much if they throw so many of these enemies. Not to mention, if they grab Ashley, you're at the mercy of random stuns. Just unjustified random stuns that make no fucking sense. The enemies are preoccupied with Ashley. They're not tightening up their defenses. They're not trying to actively avoid your shots. They're just walking through your bullets, and it's completely random how many shots it takes to actually stun the enemies to ensure they do not take Ashley away. It's so fucking retarded. And if you want to see the pure stupidity of this section, check out my blind playthrough. It's clear that they designed this section with the merchant in mind. Like, they didn't bother strategically placing the ammunition and enemies in a way that complements the whole idea of a true survival horror experience. So instead, they give you very little ammunition, and they just reserve a lot of uh, weapon upgrades, other weapons, or being forced to sell and then buy the weapon again to replenish its capacity. I mean, what the fuck were they thinking with that? That's so fucking retarded. Like, who the fuck in their right mind thought that the sequences were properly paced and the flow of the encounters made sense in complementing the survival horror aspect? The amount of dumb strategies I've had to use, the amount of holes and exploits I've had to find, the amount of times I've had to run past enemies for unjustified reasons, even after doing all that, I still don't have enough ammo to do this sequence properly and just bypass a lot of the poor designs present with this fucking sequence. That right there just borders on pure stupidity so far below the baseline level of incompetency. But just ignoring all that, to do that sequence, just kill the first couple of enemies, and then at a certain point, after Ashley's done the first switch, the enemies on the ground will spawn, so you've got to get rid of them. Sometimes you'll have to use your uh, parry to your advantage in order to set them up for kills, to save on ammunition, because the shotgun doesn't kill the enemies fast enough, and then you have to ensure that you have enough ammunition to save Ashley, and so you don't get screwed by the random stuns. Uh, if the enemies grab Ashley, they'll go over to the other side rather than go to the closest possible exit, which is very strange, but it's needed. And you have to do all these other dumb things. J just follow what I'm doing in the video, and you'll likely succeed. That, that is the end of this really retarded chapter. Stay tuned for the future parts. Thank you all for watching, and you take care now.